Hello, and welcome to part four of the video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we'll be talking about how to do three things. We'll be talking about how to save files from Blender. We'll be talking about how to create iterated saves, in other words, numbered saves of files in Blender. And we'll be talking about how to use Blender's backup system and how to use Blender's auto recovery system. So we're talking about saving, iterated saving, and backups and recovery. So let's go ahead and get started. In the last video, we created this awesome snowman out of primitive mesh shapes. In other words, we uh, made a snowman using uh, UV spheres, icospheres, cylinders, and cones. And I want to save this file. So of course, where do I go? I go up to the file and select save or save as. The first time I do this, it does not matter. So I'll just click on save. But what appears next is something that you're probably not used to because in most programs, save windows or save dialog boxes look almost always the same because there is a convention to how save windows normally look. Well, Blender's interface is different, as we know. Uh, in Blender, we don't really have windows that come up on top of other windows. For In most cases, we have windows that find themselves a part of the same window system um, that fit itself into its own screen. So this is the save dialog box, and it looks pretty different at first, but really it acts almost identical to any other save window that you've ever seen. On the left side of the screen are shortcuts to locations of places that you are most likely to save. In the top section, called System, this is where your drives will be listed. So if you're on a Windows computer, your drive letters will be listed here, and those letters correspond to the drive letters that are found in my computer, or a computer, like the C drive and any other drives like USB drives or other internal drives that you have in your computer where you can save files, those will all have drive letters. I'm on a Mac, so my drives don't have letters, but they are named, and my kind of Mac normal hard drive, my default hard drive, is just listed with a slash because that's sort of the root drive where your system, your operating system is installed. I've got some other hard drives installed here. Now, where else can you save? Your system bookmarks. These are folders like my documents or my user folder or pictures folder or the videos folder or downloads folder or music or videos folder. This is where those folders will be listed. In my copy, I'm on a Mac. Um, these folders are just shortcuts ones that I've created. And these are the same folders that are listed on the left side in my Finder window. And you'll see those in a second. The main big part of your screen is the contents of the folder where you currently are. So right now, I'm in a folder called Blender 2.7 series, which is in a folder called YouTube, which is in a folder called Data Files, which is actually a volume on my computer. Because I'm on a Mac, it'll look a little bit different uh, than if you're on a Windows PC. If I click on my desktop, you'll see that um, it changes the path up here. So it now says Users, column Desktop, and the slash just means my normal Mac hard drive. The second bar from the top is the file name that I want to save as. So if I want to name this Snowman, I can do so. Now, just a second ago, you saw that the file extension for Blender files is .blend. You do not actually have to type .blend, but I'm just doing that so you can see it. If I just leave it as Snowman, you'll see that if I click on Save Blender File, it'll save the Snowman.blend into my desktop, which is the file path right there. So I'll click Save Blender File. And now if I flip back over to my desktop, this is my um, Finder or my Explorer in Windows. On my desktop, I've got a file called snowman.blend, and I added the .blend without me having to do that. Um, you can see that Blender files are you know, relatively small. They are just vector files, which means they don't contain, they don't contain pixels. They contain things like you know, data that's stored in text, basically, like coordinates of vertices that you have in your scene. and uh, things like information that the scene need, needs to know about materials. Um, okay, so that's saving. You'll notice though that if you just go to File Save, that does work from then on. So if you want to save your work as you're working on it, you can go to File Save. If you press Control S though, this looks a little bit different. It asks you if you want to save over the previous version of the file. That's a little bit unintuitive. If you think about it, it works though. What you're actually doing when you press Control S or when you go to File Save is you're asking if you want the program to save over the previous version of the same file. And in most cases you do, but this means that you do have to click. So uh, when you do a Control S to save, you have to click a second time. If you just press Control S and then move your mouse away, it won't work. It won't have saved. And then people close Blender and they lose their work that way. So 
Control S and then you have to click a second time before you move your mouse away. Okay, so that's saving. What about iterated saves? What the heck is that about? Well, if I go up to File and Save As, I have a new option that I didn't talk about. Um, it's a button that, or two buttons actually, a plus and a minus, that do something very, very important. If you're working on a project that's taking you a lot of time to do, a very good idea is to have multiple copies of the same project as you go along in time. So if I, this is a really important project to me, I might want to name this snowman and then put an underscore or a dash, but I'll put an underscore and then I'll type 001 as a number. Notice how I put the 00 because maybe I might go over 99 versions of this snowman. That might seem like a lot of different versions of the same file, but I have gone well over 100 versions of a file when I was making a character in Blender. So, you know, if this goes up to 999, that's probably the max that I can do. But if I go over 100, I need three numbers there. So what is this all for? Well, I can click Save as Blender File. And you know, I can do things like I can say, I can maybe make the nose bigger. Great, I'll do a, I can do a Control S at this point. Or I could do a File Save As. And this is where the power of these two buttons is. If I put a number at the end of my file name, and I press this plus, it'll automatically go up to the next number. And then I can click Save as Blender File, and now I'm working on Snowman 002. Let's say I want to make this hat taller, and so what I'll do is I'll press S and then Z to make the hat taller, move that up, looks pretty good to me. And then I'll go to File and Save As, and I'll press the plus, which will make it version 3 of the Snowman and I'll click on Save as Blender File. And what that does is it just makes sure in case the file becomes corrupted or something goes wrong or I don't like the changes that I made, I can always go back to a previous version, which is really handy. And yes, I have used that feature many times. So that's making iterated saves of your file. Let's talk about Blender's backup system. Let's say that Blender crashes and you didn't save very recently. Well, Blender has a backup system, and you find it as soon as Blender launches. If I go to the Help menu, and then bring up my splash screen again, you'll see that at the bottom right of my splash screen is Recover Last Session. And if I click this, and I'm not actually going to click it now, it's actually going to try to recover the last thing that I was doing in Blender before Blender last exited, or before Blender last crashed. So if I click it, something else will load up. I was working on something else before this, so... Um, I'm not going to click it, but that's what that option does. And this splash screen again comes up when you first launch Blender, or you can get to it from the Help menu and splash screen right there. So that is Recover Last Session. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is backups. Sure, I've already told you how to do iterated saves, and iterated saves are great. If I flip back over to my um, folder, you're going to see I've got Snowman, the original file that I made, and then Snowman 01, 002, and 003. But what the heck is this snowman.blend1 file? Normal Blender files are, uh, have an extension of .blend, but if you do, if you make changes in your file and then just go to File Save or Control S, Blender actually makes a backup of before you made that change. So if I want to make this hat shorter again, if I press S and then Z and make it a short hat and move the hat down, I'm working on Snowman 003 right now, and so if I press a Control S or go to File Save, you're going to see that now, if I go back to my Finder, that, that now there is a Snowman 003.blend1. I can also see because I'm in the detailed view here, and I can see things like the date modified and the date added and the file size, that these two files, Snowman 003.blend and Snowman 003.blend1, are the same file size. That means that this .blend1 file is another Blender file, although it doesn't default to open in Blender, but it is like a backup. And so if you're making iterated saves with numbers and you're saving, you know, several times in each version, you will end up with a folder of, you know, however many different iterations of the file that you made and a backup of each one. And this backup again is just in case you want to go back one step or your file gets corrupted. Now corruption doesn't happen a whole lot, but it can, so that's why this, they made this file. You can actually have Blender in Blender's preferences save more than just one backup file. You can have Blend 1, Blend 2, Blend 3, uh, and that's again in Blender's, I believe it's in the System tab in the Blender preferences.
Um, so that's the backup system. How do I use this file? Well, let's say I accidentally delete um, the hat. Let's say I delete the head and I don't want to have to go back and make a new head. What I can do is I can change the blend file into a, or blend one file into a dot blend. And then I'll just add a little bit of an extra name onto this because we can't have two files with the same name. And I'm going to keep the dot blend that I just changed it to. And so now what I can do is I can open up that backup version that was a dot blend one file and it'll now give me my hat back and my head back. So that's using the backups. It does take up extra room on your hard drive. So if you're working off something like a solid state drive or even a small hard drive on your laptop, um, then you might want to turn this off or just to get rid of the blend one files. You don't need them, but they are handy in case anything happens. So that is backups in Blender. And that's going to be it in this video. We talked about saving, we talked about doing iterated saves, we talked about Blender's recovery system, and we talked about the backups. Uh, and that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.